Hello everyone, and welcome to the VIP episode for our subscribers. John Lennon's death is definitely one of the most shocking in pop culture. Whenever the event is brought up, people usually want to know who shot him and why. When a well-known artist dies, there will always be questions. But John Lennon's death is still hard to understand and upsetting, mostly because his killer said he was a fan. Today, we're going to talk about some of the strangest things you might not know about John Lennon's death. Now, let's go back to the Dakota apartment building in New York City on Monday, December 8, 1980. Mark Chapman may have killed John Lennon on December 8, 1980, but it wasn't the first time he tried to do so. Gloria Hiroko, his wife, says that Chapman tried to kill Lennon two months before. In an interview in 2018, Hiroko said that Mark had gone to New York two months before. He came home scared and told me that he had planned to kill Lennon to make a name for himself. He said, though, that my love had saved him. What happened was that Chapman had planned to go to New York in October, but something made him change his mind. He took a moment to think about himself. Chapman told his wife that he needed to grow up and think about his life as an adult and husband. So why did Hiroko let Chapman go back to New York in December when he had just told her two months before that he had planned to kill Lennon? Hiroko said in the same 2018 interview, the only reason I was okay with Mark went on another trip because I trusted him when he said he needed to grow up and think about his life as an adult and a husband. He wanted me to give up some time alone so that we could have a long and happy marriage. I believed him when he said he threw the gun into the ocean, but he had lied to me. Hiroko remembers the moment she found out Lennon had been shot. I know it was on a Monday. I had just made dinner after getting home from work and was watching Little House on the Prairie. On the show, Mary had just found out that she was going blind when words appeared at the bottom of the screen. John Lennon has been shot by a white man in New York City. That night, a lot changed in my life. I was now the wife of a killer, Mark David Chapman. And not just any killer. The person he killed was known and loved by millions of people all over the world. Hiroko was still married to Chapman, by the way. She won't let him leave her. Being a Beatles fan, I mourn the death of John Lennon and feel great sadness for his wife Yoko and his son Sean. These days, the couple is allowed 44 hours a year for conjugal visits. Hiroko claims the two use their time to make pizzas and have sex. Yes. Very much. Chapman had been in New York City for a few days before he shot Lennon. He was from Hawaii. The day before he shot Lennon, Chapman met another famous singer, folk legend James Taylor, in a train station. Taylor lived in a building near the Dakota at the time, and he remembered hearing the sirens and noise on 72nd Avenue. He also thinks back to the chance meeting he had with Chapman. I was stabbed in the tube stop by his killer. He pinned me to the wall and started talking in a crazy way about what he was going to do, how John Lennon was interested, and how he was going to get in touch with John Lennon. It was weird to talk to the guy 24 hours before he shot John. Chapman thought about killing other people besides Lennon too. In 1987, Chapman told People magazine in a three-part interview that he had a list of other people he could kill, including Paul McCartney, Johnny Carson, Elizabeth Taylor, George C. Scott, Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis, Ronald Reagan, and George Ariyoshi, the governor of Hawaii. But in 2010, Chapman said that the only thing on his list was that the person had to be well-known and that he picked Lennon because it was easiest. One has to wonder if Lennon's fame and the way he let his fans get close to him made him a target. Chapman and Lennon had met before he shot Lennon. After following Lennon for two days, Chapman talked to him as he and his wife. Yoko Ono walked from the Dakota building to a waiting car. They were going to the record plant recording studio, which was two miles away. Even though Lennon was on his way to the studio to finish a song for Ono's next record called Walking on Thin Ice, he stopped at the Dakota to sign autographs for a few fans who had traveled there. Around 5 p.m., Chapman gave Lennon a record copy of his most recent album, Double Fantasy, and asked him to sign it. Chapman thinks back to that conversation he had with Lennon when they met. He was, oddly enough, very kind to me and very patient with me. He took his time with me even though the car was waiting. He started the pen, and then he signed my record. He asked if there was anything else I needed. I told him, no sir, no. 
He got up and left. How Chapman and Lennon got along, I told him. No, sir, no. He got up and left. A very nice and good man. To a nobody, to sign an album for a nobody. And he's asking me, is that all I want? I mean, he's given me the autograph. I don't have a camera on me. What could I give him? Chapman and Lennon would see each other for the last time about five hours and 50 minutes after that. A few hours before Chapman got Lennon's signature, the musician curled up naked, almost in a fetal position, and wrapped himself around Yoko Wano. The famous photographer Annie Leibovitz took the picture in the couple's room in the Dakota neighborhood of New York City. Leibovitz was asked to take a picture of Lennon by himself for the cover of Rolling Stone, but Lennon demanded that Wano also be in the picture. Leibovitz suggested that the couple take off their clothes, but Wano didn't like the idea. She said she would take off her top, but then she said she didn't like the idea at all. Instead, Lennon took off everything he was wearing and curled himself around Ono. This is how Leibovitz got her picture. Later she said that having Ono dressed gave the picture more power. When Lennon saw Leibovitz test Polaroids, he asked her to make sure that the pictures from the session would be on the cover of the magazine. Lennon would leave that night, even though Leibovitz thought it was wrong to release the picture so soon after Lennon's death. Rolling Stone did so about six weeks later in its January 22nd issue. In 2009, the picture was made again, but this time with Scene Lennon and his girlfriend Charlotte Kempmall switching places. We now know that Howard Kosel told the live audience on Monday Night Football that John Lennon had died, but it almost didn't happen. At first, Kosel wasn't sure how to handle the job. The Miami Dolphins and the New England Patriots were playing on Monday Night Football, and Kossel and Frank Gifford were calling the action. With less than a minute left in the fourth quarter, the Patriots were moving toward the goal line to score the winning point. As the Patriots tried to set up for a field goal, Kossel got a call from Rune Arledge, the head of ABC News. Arledge said that his source had told him that Lennon had been killed and that the news should be spread right away. Kosal wasn't sure what to think about the news break. He thought that a football game wasn't the right place for that kind of news. Gifford, his partner in the broadcasting box, told him that the event was much more important than the end of the game when he was having second thoughts. Kosal made the news a short time later. Yes, we have to say it. Remember, this is just a football game, no matter who wins or loses. An unspeakable tragedy confirmed to us by ABC News in New York City. John Lennon, outside of his apartment building on the west side of New York City, the most famous, perhaps, of all of the Beatles, shot twice in the back, rushed to Roosevelt Hospital, dead on arrival. The question is why Chapman shot Lennon. Chapman told people his catcher in the Rise story for a long time. Chapman was crazy about the book by G.D. Salinger. He was so into the story that he thought he was Holden Caulfield, the angry main character in Salinger's story. Catcher in the Rye made Chapman feel like John Lennon had become a phony, which is what Holden Caulfield called people he met who he thought were fake and shallow. Chapman says he wasn't furious about how he thought Lennon went from being an outspoken rebel to a popular star. Instead, he was very matter-of-fact about it and started planning Lennon's murder in a cool and methodical way. And I pulled the 38 revolver out of my pocket. I went into what's called a combat stance, and I fired at his back five steady shots. Chapman's first reason for killing Lennon had a lot to do with Catcher in the Rye. He even brought a copy of the book with him when he meant and killed the singer. Inside that book, Chapman wrote, This is my statement to Holden Caulfield. Bought a copy of The Catcher in the Rye, signed it to Holden Caulfield from Holden Caulfield, and wrote underneath that, This is my statement, underlining the word this, the emphasis on the word this. At first, Chapman said that he killed Lennon to make a point about all the fakes in the world. But at his eighth parole hearing in 2014, things changed when he said, I am sorry for being such an idiot and choosing the wrong way for glory. I found my peace in Jesus. I know him. He loves me. He has forgiven me. He has helped in my life like you wouldn't believe. During his ninth parole hearing in 2016, he went even further and said that he had planned, been selfish, and done something bad. 
Chapman was crazy about Lennon, and that was the only reason he shot him. He thought that his name would be known forever, so he wanted an easy way to become famous. Chapman afterwards said that he didn't have anything bad to say about the singer. All he wanted was for something to be known about him. A member of the parole board once asked him, Don't you have anything against John Lennon? It was all about you and getting famous, right? Chapman said, You're right, and it's nothing personal. Later, Chapman said something to Wono, but it might have also been for Lennon's friends. It wasn't about her husband as a person, but about him as a well-known person. If three or four other people on the list were more popular than him, he wouldn't have been shot. The truth is that. So what's your opinion? How come Chapman killed John Lennon? Tell us in the comments section below. Check out some of these other music stories from our weird history while you're at it.